are the ATF's new rules that are going to be impacting pistol braces basically dead in the water thanks to a Fifth Circuit Federal Court of Appeals decision that came out, which basically mocked the premise of ATF passing criminal code through their own rules. We're going to be talking about that here in the video today. This obviously goes way more beyond bump stocks, which is where Cargill v. Garland, the case I'm referring to, that you can also find cited in the description box below, initially dealt with. We're reading from some of the text. Guys, let's get into it. So as many of you, I'm sure no doubt are aware, the ATF is threatening regulation and rules changes as well as interpretive changes as far as what is a pistol brace and when does it change something into a short barreled rifle, which by the way is a felony under federal and virtually every state law that I'm familiar with. Of course, there are, to my knowledge, millions of pistol braces already in circulation because the ATF has said, hey, this is good to go. But now, not through any action of Congress, but only through the ATF's rule changing, they want a do-over. They're going to flip-flop and they're going to change, possibly making millions of American firearm owners felons overnight until the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals decision dropped recently in a case dealing with bump stock bans. But guys, before I get into that, please help our channel grow and show your support for the Second Amendment at the same time by clicking subscribe, which of course will allow you to see all sorts of future content coming out for free, as well as like, which helps other folks see this channel. So guys, please take a moment to do that if you've not already done so. I know that almost 90% of you who watch our videos actually are not subscribers. So please, again, thank you very much. And with that, on with the show. So guys, if you've not already seen our video for Cargill v. Garland, it is super important. And if you're like me, and if you're not really a fan of bump stocks, you don't really own one, you never owned one or anything like that, I get it. You might be saying, why is this relevant? Trust me, it's relevant. And this video is proof of it. It's linked in our description box below. Check it out after this video if you have not done so already. So Cargill v. Garland, very, very briefly, dealt with a couple different things. One was what's the definition of a machine gun? Can an accessory become a machine gun? Two is when can the ATF pass rulemaking which can turn people into felons? In other words, when can ATF change the definition of something from something such as an accessory like a bump stock saying on the one hand back in 2010, hey, 2010, this is not a firearm, this is not a machine gun, and suddenly in 2018, oh, by the way, this is a firearm, this is a machine gun, and therefore, since it's post-1986, it cannot be transferred in Form 4, this is now a felony for all of you, of course, to possess. Oops. Right. So Cargill v. Garland, among many, many things, it said, look, the ATF, you can't play this game, guys. You cannot legislate as an administrative agency like this to create criminal code, let alone felonies, but to create criminal code. I'm going to read in part from the case because it was so meaningful. The case reads from a couple pages in, as an initial matter, it purports to allow the ATF, so in other words, we're talking about the bump stock ban rules that the ATF passed, rather than Congress. So the ATF can pass this rule, not Congress. There was no act of Congress here. ATF itself is doing this to set forth the scope of criminal prohibitions. Indeed, the government would outlaw bump stocks by administrative fiat, even though the very same agency routinely interpreted the ban on machine guns as not applying to the type of bump stocks at issue here. Nor can we say that the statutory definition unambiguously supports the government's interpretation. As noted above, we conclude that it unambiguously does not. But even if we are wrong, the statute is at least ambiguous in this regard. And if the statute is ambiguous, Congress must cure that ambiguity, not the federal courts. Okay, two very important things going on, and I want to break it down into plain English. Number one, the ATF cannot create criminal code. This is something that must be done through an act of Congress. And of course, bringing this back to the pistol brace issue, that's exactly what the ATF is doing. They came out with an initial set of rules saying, look, these pistol braces, this is all good. Now they're coming out with a second set of rules years down the line. I don't even know how many pistol braces have been sold. If you know, let me know in the comment section below. I'm betting it's somewhere in the millions, frankly. But anyways, they're, still in, they're saying now that, look, we have got this complex regime, this complex paradigm of here's how many points and here's how we're gonna interpret it and all this other kind of stuff. And now if you cross this line, which didn't exist up until whenever they enact the rules, you're now gonna be a felon. And according to Cargill v. Garland, they basically shoot down this narrative and say, you can't be doing this, guys. All right, you cannot be changing the line and classifying something totally differently. 
if something's going to happen, it needs to be happening. And it should be happening through Congress, not through administrative code, especially when we're talking about changing our interpretation and moving the field goals on people, which again, doesn't that sound something like what's happening here with pistol braces? I think so. So number two deals with the ambiguity issue, which is the second thing that I quoted from Cargill v. Garland. Here's how this could be really, really important. With the bump stock issue, you got into this whole question of when is a machine gun a machine gun? Because of course, fundamentally, a machine gun, according to the Gun Control Act, is dealing with, look, something is not a machine gun. It's on the semi-automatic side if one shot equals one trigger pull. It is a machine gun if we've got one trigger pull equals more than one shot. And of course, the ATF back in 2010, when they initially classified bump stocks as not being machine guns, they said, look, technically, this is just one trigger pull per shot. Therefore, it's not a machine gun. But in 2018, they basically tried to say, look, you know what? I realize we're harnessing recoil energy and all that kind of stuff. But in essence, we're putting out something approximating an automatic rate of fire. Therefore, eh, it's effectively a machine gun. And I realize I'm leaving some things out here. I'm trying to get the gist to it so we can hang to our point in the pistol brace video. Okay, so basically what the case said, Cargo v. Garland is, that's kind of confusing for ordinary folks. There's some ambiguity here as far as reclassifying how things have always worked all of a sudden through an executive fiat, which is what the ATF did when it comes to bump stocks in 2018. Bringing that now to pistol braces. Okay, so the ATF, are they gonna come out with some sort of very simple, clean rule which says this is when a pistol break is, is gonna be a short barrel rifle? Have they ever said that pistol braces are short barrel rifles in the past or have they, said at some point in time, look, things designed like this for this particular purpose, this does not create a short barreled rifle. Of course, that's the situation we have here. Put differently, we have a very, very complex, a Byzantine for your medieval fans out there. Keep in mind, I double majored in theology and medieval European history. We have a Byzantine set of rules with a point system for when does a pistol brace become a short barreled rifle when incorporated to this particular platform, this particular pistol. It's something that is, to say the least, a tad ambiguous. And we layer that ambiguity of the rule itself across ATS flip-flopping and interpretive ambiguity, and we result in some big, big ambiguity issues. And the reason why that's a problem is because there's a long-standing tradition in common law that goes all the way back to 1820 and before called the rule of lenity, L-E-N-I-T-Y which I covered in the Cargill v. Garland case, but I'll briefly restate here. The gist to it is that any time a criminal defendant is facing a law, criminal law, which has a degree of ambiguity to it, it should always be interpreted in the defendant's favor. And it should not be interpreted by the courts as some sort of middle ground or in the government's action or in the government's favor. It should be interpreted maximally to the defendant's favor. To say the least, we have a very analogous situation to what we have in the bump stock band, now in pistol braces, which is arguably even more ambiguous given the fact that unfortunately the rules as to what constitutes a pistol brace versus what constitutes a short barrel rifle can be as clear as mud for many different folks. So we've got some big issues here. This seems like a very analogous situation to what's happening. Again, pistol braces, bump stocks, Cargill v. Maryland. If you've not already done so, check out our video that we've already did on that, linked in the description box below. So what does this all mean again for you pistol brace fans, which includes myself, I'll add. Well, again, there is no binding precedent outside the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. The Fifth Circuit decision, Cargill v. Garland, only applies to the Fifth Circuit. It is at best persuasive authority beyond that. And of course, we'll see whether or not that particular case gets appealed and accepted at the US Supreme Court. So we don't know where that's going. The story on that, the narrative on that is not over. Let me know in the description box below, again, if you want me to be following that case as well. But for where we are right now, I think that this could really throw a monkey wrench in the fact that we have a major court, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, that came out and said, look, ATF, you can't be doing this. And then they set up an interpretive framework, the court did, that said, look, if you do something that looks like this, that's no good. And that is exactly what's happening over here on the pistol brace side. Let me know what your comments are in the comment field below. I'd love to hear what your feedback is. Likewise, if you've not already done so, as I mentioned before, please take a moment, show your support, not only for our humble little channel, but also for the Second Amendment. Click subscribe so you can see all of our future content coming out, as well as like to make sure that other folks can see this video, as well as to let us know how we're doing. Guys, both myself and the algorithm really appreciate you hanging around this long. We'll see you in the next one.